Welcome to Formula One. Yes, and I respect that, but my client has a championship to contest, so if you want our participation, I'm afraid the concessions are mandatory. Yes, that's fine. Get back to me when you can. Goodbye. No one ever just signs the contract. Anyway, thanks for coming by on such short notice. I just needed to cover a couple of quick things with you before you race. Firstly, as requested, here's a copy of your contract. It's a rolling deal, however, the team reserves right of termination if you fail to meet performance standards. Your second driver for now, but work hard, mm -hmm. hit your targets, and I'll be able to sweeten the deal. I'm also looking to get you into some invitational events throughout the season. The experience and exposure from these will be great for your image. Plus, you'll get to drive some nice historic cars. Now then, go get ready for the next session, and good luck.
We're about to join the action in what is sure to be an interesting practice session here in Melbourne. It's not long until we get the session underway and we'll have some cars appearing out on the track. Now then, Anthony Davidson, there's been a lot of talk over the last few weeks about track limits. How much is too much when you're cutting corners and running wide? What are your thoughts on this? And do you, do you think we'll be seeing drivers pushing those limits this weekend? Well, I'd be disappointed if we didn't, frankly. If race control want to clamp down on drivers wandering off the track, then it's up to them to police it. As a driver, you're being paid to get your car around the circuit as quickly as possible, don't forget. So if you're not pushing those limits, if you're ignoring the advantageous line, then you're not doing your job properly. Now, I agree that, you know, we have these white lines there for a reason, and we do want to see those limits enforced. But for me, it's not a driver's responsibility to do that. In the unforgiving world of Formula One, free... Morning, Jeff here. I'm looking forward to working with you as your race engineer. Hope you've had a good night's sleep, because we've got a lot of work to do today to prep for the season ahead. We're ready to fire up the car, so why not head out and get a few laps under your belt? That's our race over. Blank flag. We've been blank flagged. Drive back into the pits. An interesting practice session there then. Let's remind ourselves of the top three. Who are Raikkonen, Hamilton, got my message. Perfect. Welcome to home away from home. We get more real-time data from the factory now than ever before, and it all comes through here. So I have to spend more time checking over the reports and less time hunting you down in the hospitality suite. But to that end... Sorry, just a sec. Yeah, Chris, is this important? I'm in the middle of something. Okay. Right. Um, well, that makes no sense. Have Sarah reset the simulation and run it again. Okay. Sorry about that. As I was saying, we've set up a desk for you at the front here. You can get onto the network from your laptop, so make sure to check the R&D screen regularly. And let us know how you want to use the data that we've collected over the weekend and through the practice programs. Also, bear in mind that the news from the factory won't always be good. Sometimes tests fail, like you've seen just now. And when that happens, we have to divert additional resources to fix it. C'est la vie, I'm afraid.
look at the classification at the end of the session then, here are your top three. Bottas, Hamilton and Kimi Raikkonen. That's it for...
As all the cars are now over the line, your top three again are Hamilton, Ricardo, and Max Verstappen. Thank you for joining us for free practice today. Hey, looks like you've got a bit of rivalry going on out there. This is good, gets people talking about you. Just make sure you outperform them, okay? Hi, how are you? I'm just passing on your qualifying goals for this weekend. Welcome to Melbourne, where qualifying... Grid is all set then for the race tomorrow, but before we go...
It's out with the old and in with the new here at Albert Park as we usher in what we hope will be a triumphant new era of Formula One racing. For our drivers, though, it's very much business as usual as they look to be first across that line and get their championship off to a winning start. Just south of Melbourne's downtown business centre is the one and only Albert Park Circuit. 3.3 miles of public roads, all closed for the weekend of course, make for a bumpy racing surface with little undulation. There are 16 corners around the lake, but a couple of good passing opportunities as well, thanks in part to the DRS zones into Turn 1 and Turn 3. Today's race, of course, not simply the start of a new season, but the start of a new kind of Formula 1. Anthony Davidson, great to have you with us once again. This is a big moment for the sport, big changes to the technical regulations, the potential, perhaps, to give us the biggest shake-up since 2014, very different cars visually and, fingers crossed, much faster as well. Good thing then that combined these teams put in just a shade over 13,000 kilometers on the clock during testing. The cornering speed of these new machines is absolutely unbelievable. How many lap records are still held by Michael Schumacher from 2004? Well, on the right day, on the right tires, we might just be threatening them this year. Wider tires, wider cars, more downforce. I have to say they look great and the qualifying spectacle is undebatable. Now the big question remains, can they follow, can they race, or have these new rules gone too far? Well then, after an exciting qualifying session yesterday, let's take a look at how the cars line up. Sebastian Vettel will start on pole. Fantastic qualifying from the multiple world champion. Edging out Raikkonen, he'll start P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Bottas, Verstappen, Felipe Massa and Perez, Ocon, Kvyat, Grosjean and Kevin Magnussen, Hülkenberg, Palmer, Lewis Hamilton and Alonso, Stroll, Ricardo, Carlos Sainz and Pascal Wehrlein, Ericsson and a McLaren rounds off the grid. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track.
That's a fantastic performance from Ferrari. It hardly looked in doubt. So, Ant, how exactly did they set themselves apart from the pack today? Well, time management probably played quite a large role in the outcome of this one. As ever, it's not just about speed. It's all about maintaining that speed consistently over a stint, over a race distance. So being able to keep up the lap times while still being smooth on the controls and gentle on the tyres, that's really where the race was won today. So here they come now, out onto the podium. Wherever you go, anywhere in the world, the prancing horse flags are dominant in the grandstands and they're out in force again today. It's Ferrari on the top step once more. So then, it's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. Keep the one. Indeed it is. And this is Jonathan. He's going to let you drive.